What's going on out there? Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, T.W., and look who's back with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, BQ, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up. Give it up. They're applauding. You can't hear them because they're out there in the internet Nothing. Land. nothing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> in internet land. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um yes thank you so much to all the people who have been supporting the show um let us know drop me comments you know we did something tried something a little a little different last week by uploading the show in segments and you guys actually have been very responsive you know uh consuming the segments one by one you know let us know if, if that's actually better for you to consume the content in, in 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 smaller chunks you can drop your comments right here below make sure you leave your name and where you're from so we can shout you out and this is just a great way to give us feedback. Honestly, um, BQ, what would you say? Do you what 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 do you think has been the, the feedback so far from people with the uh, the different style of of delivering the format? Uh, people were uh, people were definitely confused, uh, but I, <laughs> but it seemed like some people really liked it, and then yeah. some were like, "What the hell's going on here?" It's it's more work for me, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you know, going forward, at a minimum, I probably won't chop up the whole show. I think, mm. I think we're gonna do on YouTube the whole show, and then uh, whatever the main important parts were, I'll, yeah. I'll chop those up. Yeah. Uh, that way, people can consume them like that, or I, I can try to break it up into people... three or something. I'm not, well, you know, we'll see. I, yeah. But I told a lot of people, hey, I'm just experimenting. Mm. You know, don't, don't get too crazy on me. This is college. You're just trying stuff, you know, just trying stuff. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, um, but, you know, I, I think I even speak for BQ a little bit here. Um, I appreciate that you guys definitely did get up good numbers on all the videos. Um, you know, it was definitely more work getting them all chopped up and uploaded. Um, but I thought that they were pretty well received. There were, you know, a lot, a lot of comments dropped. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. We'll see what we do going forward. Maybe not. Maybe there won't be that many pieces, but um, it's something that we could do more of going forward. You just got to stay tuned and see. Um, big impact news outside of the ring this week. Well, we're right up here up against Slammiversary. So, you know, this show is going to be a, basically a Slammiversary preview. Uh, there wasn't really much of note that happened on the episode this week. It was really just getting us here for you know tomorrow night by the time you watch this it'll be tonight uh we're recording this on friday you're going to get it tomorrow morning saturday and slam anniversary is going to be tonight right so um it was announced that impact is releasing a few more vip tickets for the setup for slam anniversary bq are you excited about this you think this is going to really help add to the atmosphere for slam anniversary yeah um it's it's a it's a little odd to release them the day before uh, because, you know, unless you're in Nashville or within driving distance right. and, uh, you know, they're, they're VIP tickets. I thought they were general admission. So when I was like, okay, well, they're going to be 50 bucks or something like that. Like I was like, that's four hours away from me. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get on. Then I saw his VIP and I'm just like, eh, I'm not really trying to make the, the, the drive out for all that. Uh, yeah. not that I don't have the money for it, but I just bought nwa tickets and wnba oh. tickets and just came back from Very hawaii nice. and all that i was like i don't really feel like uh yeah going the 250 dollar route yeah um and but listen it, that that's that's more on impact than it is on you right like right. as fans we're not obligated to spend our money with these companies it's up to the company to compel us to say that this is something i want to go in my pocket for right so that's on impact you know they need to make it more attractive where you do feel like hey you just said you're willing to make a four-hour drive you know, if you got people that are willing to make a four hour drive, you need to make sure you're doing everything you can to give them value, right? To make sure that they feel like it's worth taking that kind of drive. And you're definitely not the only person who thinks that way. You know, somebody told me a long time ago that if you think something's a good idea, other people think it's a good idea too. So you're certainly not the only person who's thought about that. Like, hey, I would make the drive if the price was right. You know, so, you know, Impact definitely, you know, they, they got to think about that when they're putting together their, well, their well, everything, right? Like, yeah, but I mean, this was a, I mean, it's a VIP package and they, you know, they, it wasn't just the tickets, you know, there's, there's perks to it. So, I mean, they were giving away value. I just didn't feel like spending that kind of money after the spending, I'm not going to get in a dollar amount. I just spent yeah, this yeah, yeah. my trip, you know, um, I just, I just don't want to go that route. 
Yeah. Uh, right, especially after I just bought like thirty dollar NWA tickets, I was just like, yeah. ah, so what you're saying is a lot. Tasha Stills is worth your hard earned dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> I love Tasha Stills, by the way. I'm I'm a Tasha Stills uh, fan. I think she's you know one of the best things on their show. Um, let's see. So they they released some some new tickets. Um, they are they they announced that. The knockouts tag title match, speaking of Tasha Steels, is going to be on the, the, the pre show. So I guess that'll be a good segue for us to get into our Slam Anniversary preview. Um, Fire and Flavor defending the knockouts tag team titles against Havoc and Rosemary. BQ, how are you feeling about this and who you got? So, as far as the pre show goes and, and putting it on there, I'm all for pre show matches that matter. I, I've said that hundreds of times, you know when they're just like, oh, it's a Diener versus Triple XL, like no one's tuning in for that. Um, so you, you want them to matter. Um, but I still say don't put the damn tag team titles on the pre-show um, because now you, now we're actually like, deval- I don't want to say devaluing the titles, but it feels like that a little bit because it, then it feels like, oh, because the pre-show is still like a throwaway match. It, it's it's a it's a teaser. It's a it's a whatever, but it's it's still telling you, hey, this wasn't good good enough for the main card in a sense so right. the, the the placement was a was a little weird but as far as uh my prediction uh being that it's a pre-show match i don't see the type the titles changing hands i don't know why you would uh if if fire flavor never lost them to begin with i would be more inclined to be like oh maybe maybe they might lose this match i don't see i don't think there's a chance in hell uh usually usually a pre-show match is for the baby face to win Mm. But in this case, because the titles aren't aligned, I think I think they're gonna retain retain the belts. Um, as far as the build up to it and all that, I mean, Rosemary lost a lot of matches and then just got thrown into this tag team. You know, they probably could have done a little bit better with it, but yeah, it's still probably one of the matches I'm I'm kind of looking forward to the most okay. out of the card. But I I don't expect um yeah I think people once they said okay well, this is gonna be on the pre show. I think people were thinking, oh, well, maybe the Iconics will show up during the match. I think people are overbooking the surprises a little bit. They're not yeah. just going to have random run-ins, you know. But right. once it was like, okay, it's on a pre-show, I think people were like, okay, we're just getting a match. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it should be cool. It should be a cool way to start off the show. I just I'm not a big fan of putting the titles on, you know, yeah. on there, but whatever. Um, I, I got a feeling they're going to do a title change just for the sake of doing a title change. Um... Fire and Flavor have had the titles for a little while, but they're also a very good act, right? Like, I don't think there's any good reason to take the titles off of Kiera Hogan and Tasha Stills. They're they're still, again, a very good, fun act with a lot of life to it. It's not like this is stale or boring. They're good together. Um, You know, the promos are fun. And I just don't see any reason to break them up or take the tag team titles off of them. Uh, Now... A big reason why this show, why this this match was moved to the pre-show is because there's two other spots on the main card where mystery women will be appearing. And I guess they felt that, that was, it, you know, yeah. really diminished the importance of the Knockouts Tag Team title match. But again, that says more about how you're booking the Knockouts Tag Team titles than it does about the people holding those titles. But do you make a good point, though? Um if if there's if you got surprised women because you're right there's two you're right two I didn't realize that so yeah I can see why you would space it out and have the women knock out the no pun intended knock out the uh, tag team titles early on and let the dudes right. wrestle for a bit so it makes it actually makes quite a bit of sense yeah so uh, getting into the main card we got W Morrissey taking on Eddie Edwards how do you feel about the build here uh, are you interested in this match and who do you see getting the win? I'm interested because I like both guys a lot, and I've I thought we, we talked about this last week. Didn't really agree with putting Rich Swan against uh, you know Morrissey. Mm. That was more for, more so for Swan not taking a loss right after he lost to Omega, but right. uh, neither here nor there. But other than that, I think they've handled Morrissey really good. He's cu- he's cut some good promos. Um, yeah. Would have been a lot more intense without. You know, I'm going to say it uh, without we on the night in the background, but some good, <laughs> some good promos, um, you know, you know, and I mentioned last week that I hadn't watched a full episode in a little while. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was watching segments and clips and highlights and all that good stuff. But I watched the whole episode last week. And when, when Morrissey was, uh, said, Oh, well, I accept your challenge. I was just like, when the hell, when did right. Eddie when Edwards did get him? <laughs> yeah. And, and then I kind of thought, oh, yeah, I think I kind of remember him maybe rich, standing up for rich Swan or something. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I, honest to God, I don't know. I don't remember him making a challenge either. You know, I remember that uh, Morrissey interrupted the match where um, the Japanese guy was getting ready to have a match, and he told him that he had beaten up Eddie Edwards in the parking lot. But I don't remember Eddie Edwards actually making a challenge to Morrissey. I, I mean, they're referencing yeah. referencing it, so I'm sure it happened. They're, obviously, I just don't remember it. I I mean I do remember Morrissey cutting a promo where he's saying there's no friends mm-hmm. when he was directing that at Eddie Edwards and I think he was even directing it at Swan and Mac I I don't I don't quite recall so I mean you know I guess there's a feud there uh, yeah. it should be a good match I, so I'm looking forward to it because I like both guys but I would say I'm probably gonna give Morrissey the win I don't I don't see why you yeah. would have eddie edwards win. i don't know why you would have eddie edwards fight him to begin with to be honest because you know if we're gonna hopefully build this dude up to take on you know what no i stand by that they want eddie edwards to fight kenny omega next Mm. so Mm. i think in in some weird roundabout way they want eddie edwards to beat the guy who beat rich swan who was beat by kenny omega no no, i see i totally see that i totally see that yeah Yeah. Like comparing resumes almost. R- right, right, right. So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think w-, w. Morrissey's getting the win here. It 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 looks like they're building him very strong, right? If you're going to let him beat Rich Swan, then why wouldn't he beat Eddie Edwards? Um, you know, he's a new face. They like to build up the new faces. So I don't see them getting away from that here. I say W. Morrissey's going to get the win. All right. So next we come to our first – uh, women's match. Well, it's actually an intergender match on the main card. We got Brian Myers and Tennille Dashwood going against Zack Ryder. I mean, Matt Cardona and <laughs> a mystery partner. So what do you think of the build here and who you got winning? So even though this was like a one night build, this is the most intriguing thing on the entire card to me. No, mm-hmm. no kidding. The way uh, the way that you know Tanil hit the the uppercut on a you know between the legs yeah. on on uh let's just say Ryder because of you and then it zoomed <laughs> you out. Always Zach Ryder to me, dog. You could you could show up yeah. in whatever promotion you want to. You can grow your beer out as big as it is, like dude. You always gonna be Zach Ryder to me. <laughs> woo woo it just, woo. It just that no. this came, it's like this came out of nowhere. But it, it all falls together so perfect and it all makes so much sense. And it's just like, why? Do, how could we not even fantasy book this in our head? How we not see this coming that, you know, he's in the company with his ex and we could see his current girl. I mean, it just fit together so, so perfect in every way. So I'm actually super intrigued with this. Uh, it's clearly Chelsea Green. Um, I know they're doing the, the oh, I'm pick a pick opponent. I would imagine they're going to announce chelsea green before the actual pay-per-view hits there's no way it's gonna be they're getting there you gotta you gotta announce somebody to get to get some interest you can't just everything's up for surprise you know so um I, i'm sure it's gonna be her there's no re- i mean there's no reason for it to be anybody else that'd be messing up a, a beautiful yeah story. but didn't chelsea green just show up in ring of honor yeah but she's she's just a like freelance and i mean she already said she wanted to be cody rhodes you know like when cody uh... Okay, yeah. there you go. There it is then. There it is. Yeah, because they, they certainly are hinting that it'll be her. They've hinted that it'll be her a lot. But with her having just shown up in Ring of Honor a few days ago, um, I thought that kind of took her off the table as far as impact goes. So. I think she. I think her and Cardona win. There's no doubt about that, uh, especially because I would imagine she's probably going to reach the finals of the uh, win, uh, Ring of Honor tournament because you don't have – this is just wrestling one on one. Like you announced the very last competitor as the surprise. They're not going out in the first or second round. They're going to last pretty long, right. uh, probably to the finals, maybe win it. So, um, 
there's probably an agreement between Ring of Honor there, like, hey, we don't want her to lose on your show if yeah. she shows up. Um, so I, I fully expect them to win. I bet, I mean, 100% guarantee that uh, her and Cardona win. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely teasing that it'll be Chelsea Green if she has that open, open contract type, open, open contract type deal, which wouldn't surprise me at all because, you know, none of these promotions are paying enough to keep their wrestlers working exclusively for their company um, other than WWE and probably AEW, you know, they just can't afford to it. I mean, even AEW wrestlers work independent events. Right. So, you know, most places just are not paying enough where their wrestlers will be exclusively on their own show. So with that said, I 100% expect it will be Chelsea Green to be uh, Matt Cardona's partner. I sort of wanted her to be Laurel Van Ness. I know she's not gonna. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we were just getting the good parts of that hot mess character before she left the company. Because she was that crazy bride for a while. But yeah. then she found a way of just smearing the makeup, being a little crazy. And that worked. And then all of a sudden she was gone. And by the way, um, if you guys uh, out there are really interested in uh, a good Chelsea Green interview, um, shout out to those wrestling girls. Uh, they did an interview with Chelsea Green the other day. Uh, I, I listened to the whole thing. It was excellent, man. It was excellent. And I really enjoyed it because, you know, I had never really heard Chelsea Green really speak before. And after listening to this interview, like, she, I can't not root for her. Like, she just really seems like a dope person. Um, you know, she's all about like, you know, which is she, she's a super fit person, but she's super about like body positivity and that kind of stuff. And she just, oh man, she just came off like a really, really likable person. So if you guys are interested in a good Chelsea Green interview, uh, go on, you know, YouTube and, and search, I guess, Chelsea Green or Those Wrestling Girls. That's the name of the people that did the, uh, the interview. And it's a really good watch. Uh, it's a really good watch, really good uh, in-depth interview that really just kind of brings you uh, you know, kind of just a great personality piece. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, if you guys are interested in Chelsea Green, definitely check that out. She Shout has out her own those. podcast now too, doesn't she? Yeah, um, yeah. She talked about that. She talked about having a podcast and she talked about how like in her podcast, she um, has said that she's going to do things totally differently now, you know? Um, and so that kind of speaks to what you were saying about her saying that she wanted to be the Cody Rhodes this time around. And, you know, I think I know what she meant by that. She, uh, speaking of podcasts, uh, Vicky Guerrero, who I've, I've said has a horrible podcast. I mean, yeah. <laughs> bad, bad sound quality. Uh, it's, it's podcasting one one like going on Wikipedia to get your questions. Mm -hmm. Like it stinks. She had Eddie Edwards on, knew absolutely nothing about him. <laughs> Um, I'd listened to her interview the first time I heard her. I gave her a couple opportunities. She was interviewing Taya Valkyrie and, and knew nothing, nothing. And I was wow. just like, this is the worst interview I've ever heard in my life. And uh, she had Eddie Edwards on and she asked if this, this was his first slam anniversary. Yeah. Like that, if you can't, if you Yikes. don't know the answer to that, then... <laughs> yeah, that's rough. That's rough. That's rough. Yeah. There's, just, there's no way around it. That's rough and makes you look like you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, that's yeah. that's a wild question. Is this your first anniversary? Oh, wow. Uh, yikes. And the Big problem yikes. is that they, they want to pitch these impact interviews to, mm -hmm. you know, big name podcasters mm -hmm. and little name podcasters too. just everyone but us. But um, <laughs> they pit, you know, oh, we want, you know, mm. instead of, you know, a targeted podcast such as this one right uh, they, so, oh get it get on, on, on vicky gross people listen to him but i mean she doesn't know what she's talking about so why would her audience you know so let's let's so, fans out there in the impact lounge listen if you guys want to see tw and bq or just bq or just tw you want to see us interview your favorite impact wrestling stars go on social media and talk to impact wrestling tell them you want to see whatever impact star get an interview on the impact lounge and we'll take care of it. You know what I mean? But right now I don't think they like us very much. Exactly. And I can live with that. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to tell you the truth, baby. We're going to tell you the truth. Some people are going to try to blow smoke and tell you what you want to hear. Some people are going to try to tell you what the company wants to hear. We're going to tell you the truth and you decide if you like it or if you don't, we'll be right here. All right. Um, so next up on the card, we got, Moose versus Chris Saban. All right, BQ, how you feel about this one? What do you think of the build? 
and who you got winning. So we've discussed before this build is very, very forced, like Mm -hmm. very, I I don't know. I don't know if any viewer was watching this when Chris Saban came in and had any clue why Chris Saban was attacking him. You know, they were trying to do some long-term storytelling with this where, you know, Moose eliminates James, uh, James Storm from the tournament and then injures Chris Saban, but no one remembered any of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they've, you know, are trying to force these guys to kind of have a bit of a blood feud and it's doesn't feel very natural. But, yo, Moose versus Rich Swan is my favorite match of the year. Chris mm. Saban's about that size. So we know that Moose can like really put on something quality. And then yeah. Moose always, I, I say it before every pay per view, he always delivers before, you know, at a pay per view. Yeah, that's true. You know, whether it's his entrance, the, the match itself, like he, he's, he, he's had that like WrestleMania mindset. That's how yeah. he, he goes into pay per views, you know. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something you haven't seen me do before. I'm going to totally make agree. my entrance quality, you know. So it's, it's, this should be a fun one. Just, you know, the build was, you know, out of nowhere force like not what yeah. people really wanted to see from moose right now mm. but uh and I, I think they had chris saban on on bti versus johnny swinger you know selling for johnny swinger like he should have been whipping right. johnny swinger's ass if he's gonna take on moose but um I, i'm gonna say moose will absolutely win this there's like no doubt in my mind right uh you know the but the build itself just completely out of i don't want to say it's out of left field it was just not super well done, but yeah, probably be one of the better matches on the card. I think that um, I think I, I, I might have rather had seen James Storm in this position. You know, they didn't seem like they had much of a plan for James Storm when he came back, and I think that's a no. mistake. I think that's a mistake. Like, if you're gonna, I I think that Impact needs to get away from the TNA stuff. Um, I think that like you know, you said it a, a few weeks ago. You know, that was like. 10 12 years ago man matter of fact 2014 right 2013 when it all fell apart that itself was eight years ago right okay like that's a you know like 2013 was the apex of impact wrestling and and since then it's all been you know downhill and you know you could argue that they're slowly climbing back up now but um yeah man like you know we're 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 at a point where there's enough fans out who don't even really remember that stuff. Yeah, so, you're talking 18 year olds who were children right, at that time. Right. So so this is a perfect time to get away from it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Move forward. Like I, I think impact needs to be focused on moving forward and being what's next. You know, um, AEW is probably the company that would be considered on the cutting edge of what's next. But, you know, in all honesty, <laughs> you know, a lot of what they do, I can live without. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> don't get me started on Darby Allen again. But I, I mean, but <laughs> right. if that's what they consider the the future, then I'll pass. You know, I, I think you can build around the Jake somethings of the world and have a different show, have a different product, have something different than what AEW is offering, you know, a little different than what WWE is offering. You know, I yeah, you know, I I think it's right there. You know what I mean? Or if you're gonna bring back these guys, like bring back a James Storm, feature him, right? Feature him, same way you're doing Eric Young, right? Feature him, build him up, let use his presence, right? These guys have worked around the world. They are skilled on the mic. They're skilled in the ring. They're skilled with pushing their character on screen, and use what they can do to help make your show better, right? Like if, if you got shows with segments with James Storm and Eric Young, like these guys are going to do a good job in the segments that you give them. So use that to do what? Elevate the new talent. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, this- crazy idea. I don't, that doesn't seem to be on Impact Wrestling's radar. Uh, Scott Demore was on Busted Open Radio today. I haven't heard it yet. But I, but I feel like when Scott Demore is on, they just throw him softball questions because, you know, they don't want to ask any good, uh, you know, any, any good hard questions. But I mean, like, I, I just want to know, man, I, I feel like Impact feels like they are kind of content running in place right now. Yeah. And um, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I don't know how long people are going to just keep running on the treadmill, you know? 
uh, eventually they're going to want to get out and see something exciting and new. So that's my rant. I mean, that's um, what I think. I'm going to let you get to finish your, you know, your prediction, all that. But that's yeah. what I've I've been saying that they're kind of treading water. But I think I, re- I really, truly think when all these guys, the Kylie Ray was gone, Taya Valkyrie and these bigger names that they lost and they didn't replace. I think they were like, look, we're trying to save our money for the summer. Let's mm-hmm. work with what we have <laughs> up until then. And it's I mean, yeah. ugh, they're they're running in place absolutely well they they certainly wouldn't be the only company who does that right i mean like anybody who's watched wwe knows that you know in a typical year from april till from 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 january to april you get the wrestlemania push best time of the year to be a, a, a wwe fan no question um then from april till July is garbage. Then from July to August, you get the SummerSlam push. They they heat it up real quick. Then from August till November, December, garbage again. So and and that's the pattern that WWE takes you on all year, man. All year, it's like crap, 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 amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, and so when the amazing misses, it's it's awful. But so Impact wouldn't be the only wrestling company to say, hey, we're gonna take our foot off the gas a little bit. The difference right. is Impact doesn't have 50 years of good credibility built up amongst their fans where they're just gonna keep watching no matter what, you yeah. know what I mean? Like those numbers. Uh, on 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 Twitch and Access TV can go down quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yeah, so absolutely. They they need to keep the fans excited and interested. All right. Um, well, what's your prediction on that match? So my prediction on that match is I think Moose is going to win. I think Moose is going to win. Um, I believe that they are just you know keeping Moose in a holding pattern until yeah. he can get back to Kenny Omega. And- um. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but that I'm just just going off what I see. I think Moose is going to get another shot at Kenny Omega in a fair one on one, and you know we'll see what happens then. But it's just you know it's just extending the booking a little bit. And you know what what I will say I don't know if this is done on purpose or not. This this also fits that uh, story they've been doing with Moose over the last two and a half years, where he is facing TNA's past at the mm. pay per views. I mean. Wow. RVD, EC3, wow. Rhino. I, I bet mean, you they didn't plan it like that. <laughs> I, I'm almost positive they didn't. It's probably a complete, <laughs> you know. That's why, you know, like you said, I would, James Storm in that position actually would have been a little cooler, but uh, right. whatever. All right. So we got the knockouts championship match. We got Dirana, Dirana, Diana Perazzo versus a mystery op- opponent. What do you think is going on here? I once interviewed Diana Perazzo, uh, my second interview ever, and I called her Donna Perazzo. <laughs> and uh, she joked about it, but I want to say like four months later, she wasn't referring to me, but four months later on Twitter, she's like, I'm so sick of people calling me Donna. You, you don't know my name. And I'm sitting here like, uh, I fell in that category, but it, it was like a total slip of the tongue. I didn't even know I said it <laughs> until I was corrected. I was like, I didn't say that, did I? But yo, she seems like the person that would laugh it off to your face and never forget it. Right, right. <laughs> I never forget it. Yeah, she used to follow me on Twitter and she unfollowed me. I'm like, okay, maybe that's why. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm going to stick by a very bold prediction that um, it's Tessa Blanchard. Mm. But she did a wink. Didn't she wink at the TV at the Who screen is? this episode when she was going off air or something? Who did that? Deanna. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I thought remember. someone pointed that out. So if she did oh. that, then I would say she's probably not forecast. They're probably not going to forecast their opponent like that. They, oh, Tessa did used to do the wink thing. Right, right. Huh. Yeah, that's why I yeah. said that. Interesting. It, there was that segment with Scott Demore where he's like, oh, it could be hardcore country. It's, it's going to be iconic. Uh, it's a hot mess. Like right there, he gave away three people. It's not going to be, or four people. It's not going to be, I don't, I really don't think they're forecast, like going to give it away like that. Okay. So I, I'm going to go with Tessa Blanchard. I think it's a very, um, I think it's a very bold prediction. It's probably a 10% chance of that happening, mm. especially because I don't see her. 
I haven't seen her. You, you know, you said before, like no one's no one appears to be sco- her, scooping her up. Right. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of like accountability with her online for some of the things that were said and the right. actions like uh, the only uh, by not a lot. You mean zero zero. Yeah, there was the one apology that was very like BS. Um, and then her social media is as if nothing happened and she's just free as a bird and the happiest yeah. person in the world. So it doesn't it doesn't scream like I, I kind of learned from that situation. So maybe okay. impact doesn't take a chance. Uh, but I, but I would say, I think someone brought this up on, I don't remember where I was reading this. Someone's like, what if it's, you know, because now they seem to be cool with NWA. What if it's Kylie Ray? Um, because we didn't get the Deanna Perrazzo match at Bound for Glory. Mm. And it seems like they, they work something out because Impact let her out of her contract to go to NWA. Uh, which is weird because you would think you'd really want her because she's, they haven't come close to replacing her. Right. So I, I'm trying to stick by Tessa Blanchard because that was my initial, I, you know, I'm, I'm changing. I had no, I, I, I can't be, <laughs> I, I'm going to change that. I'm, I'm going to say it's Kylie Ray. Um, or it could be, we could see someone from AEW step up. I just don't, when I say AEW, I don't think it's like Britt Baker. I think it would be like right. a Ty Conti or something like that. Uh, but I, I do feel that Deanna is going to win regardless of who it is. Mm, as she should, as she should. Um, I So I think there's, this is actually, there's a good bit of intrigue here, and I think this is going to be the co-main event. I think this is going to be the co-main event because I think they have a good chance to do a good surprise here. If this is early in the show, I think I'll be a little bit surprised because right. I think that um, – I think if they have something good, they're going to want to put it on late in the show. Um, I think there's some some serious options here. I think that, uh, you know, a very real option would be, um, what's the girl's name from the Iconics? Not Billy Kay. Uh, uh, Peyton Royce. Yes, Peyton Royce. I think Peyton Royce is a very real option. Um I think I, I saw an interview that said Ruby Riot wasn't going to do it. Right. Um, I I think the Kylie Ray thing is an option, and I'm gonna tell you why I think it's a real, a very realistic option. Because when you mentioned it, my first thought was, "Well, that would be a waste." Because we were all very excited about the Kylie Ray Diana Perazzo ma- match that was supposed to happen last year. So my thought was. Well, why would you then do this match without promoting it? But why didn't the match happen last year, right? Because of unforeseen <laughs> uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances that caused the match to not go on. And if you book the match without promoting it this year, in the event something like that were to happen again, you still got Sue Young in the back. And yeah, there you, know we go. I mean? you can just go ahead and do that. Um, so I think Kylie Ray could be a real possibility, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. If we're, you know, pie in the sky to me, the best, most perfect person they could pick would be Thunder Rosa from the NWA, uh, slash AEW. Yeah, I mean, I agree. She's an excellent wrestler. She's a butt kicker. She's got, um, you know, she's, she's, she's got great in ring. Um, uh, you know, her character is good. You know, I mean, she's a fighter, right? She's a fighter. I like my wrestling to feel like a fight and um, not like in a Zia Lee way where you catch a kick and get knocked out in the ring. But I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> just sell me the idea that I'm watching a fight. Right. Right. Like, right. You don't have to actually fight the person. Um, I, so I think that, um, I think that Thunder Rosa would be the home run. If you ask me who I think it's actually going to be, though, I think Chelsea Green does the the does the uh, the mixed tag match, so that takes her out of this. Ah, oh, man, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like Mickey James. I'm just not expecting a big surprise here. I think it's like it's going to be you know Mickey James or Peyton Royce. Or uh, some oh oh oh, T 
Taylor Wilde. We haven't seen Taylor Wilde in forever. That's <laughs> like who I think it's probably going to be. It's supposed Taylor to be someone Wilde. from outside of the company, though. Huh? It's supposed to be someone from outside the company. Says who? Uh, internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, 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 it's, it's been loosely implied. Yeah, true. Taylor Wilde came back for a couple of days. They teased her and Deanna Perrazzo. Deanna Perrazzo... Uh, started. She basically cannibalized her whole group because she was running away from Taylor Wilde, and we haven't seen Taylor Wilde. So, do not be shocked if Taylor Wilde answers the challenge for the knockout style. Yeah, because it's really weird that Taylor just, unless something else is just going on, it's very weird that she's not on television. Especially because Impact is very uh, famous for like, okay, this person's coming back to the company. They're going to get a title shot or yeah. someone's debuting period. They're going to get a title shot. So the reason yeah, I was kind of, I, I think we solved the mystery. I think that's it. You think so? <laughs> we'll see the, the reason I got stuck on Tessa Blanchard was because Moose, um, he did an interview for my boy, Mike, uh, on the fight game podcast and he, um, or brace for impact podcast on the fight game network. And he, he, he knew who the, he said, I know of two surprises. And Tesla's like one of his best friends. He used to be a roommate. So that's why I was kind of like, yeah, oh, dude, maybe it is her because he would know. But there, there's definitely a lot of options. If it was Santana Garrett, would you be, would you think that's too like small time and that would be disappointing? Um, you know, I really liked Santana Garrett when she was in Impact before. Um, you know, she's somebody who she can really wrestle, but she's never really gotten a chance to be a feature player. Yeah, right. I wouldn't mind her, but I wouldn't be like, wow, you know? Yeah. When you say surprise, right, like that implies that you're going to get a wow out of it. Right. You know, it doesn't surprise doesn't just feel like this is something that you didn't plan on. Surprise feels more like, again, there's some sort of wow factor. And um, I wouldn't mind seeing Santana Garrett at all. Uh, I just I don't think that meets the wow factor criteria. So it's going to be Tommy Dreamer, the wig. Yeah, so. <laughs> or Santina Morella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on, we've got <clears throat> a four-way tag match for the Impact World Tag Team titles. We got Violet by Design, which will be some combination of Rhino, Joe Doring, uh, Diener, and Eric Young versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack versus TJP and Falaba versus the Good Brothers, but uh, I saw a report earlier that TJP is actually out of Slammiversary, so what does that do to the mixed tag? Let's see. Uh, according to Mike Johnson, the PW Insider, Impact Wrestling announced that TJP would not be competing tomorrow on the Impact Tag Ch- Championship 4-Way at Slammiversary. He's been, he had been slated the team with Fala Bob to pay-per-view. The match will remain a 4-Way, but who will replace TJP has not been announced. Hmm. So, follow Ba on Facebook because I'm Facebook friends with him. He just he posted that, then he put Ba like, <laughs> like, like where he was feeding into it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I and, and the reason I point that out, even though he just put Ba, like it kind of it it, it kind of made you believe they're just going to find a new partner for him. Yeah, but he's been so, and I like him, uh, so I, I'm not trying to say you know you know be a dick when i say this but he's been very irrelevant on the show yeah um i mean wasn't he like broken homeless you know a a few (laughs) weeks ago so Mm. i don't think he's important enough on the car he's he's in the match because of tjp not any for any other reason than that uh just i think he's capable of a lot I'm, i'm just saying when you're broken homeless a few weeks ago I don't think it's a their priority to be like, okay, we need to keep him in the match. Right. Because it would be very random to give him a partner at this point. I mean, his partner is TJP. So right. I would think I would think more so the logic, the common sense would be that their team is just out of it totally. Maybe they'll get a title match down the line. Uh maybe I'm thinking way too hard on that. So I, I think But they said that's not what that's not what they're gonna do, right? According to the according to the update from Mike Johnson, they said that it's still going to be a four way, right? It's going to be a four way. But what I'm saying is I think it's going to be like, they're going to insert decay in there or something like that. I don't think it's going to be, there's, there's some (laughs) people who are like, what's that? Yeah. Black Taurus. Yeah. Black Taurus and Falaba. Yeah. (laughs) 
But I mean, there's some people like, oh, maybe the Ascension will show up, or maybe the Authors of Pain. You know, like they could. Wait, 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 wait! Time, time. But do you really still have people talking about the Ascension, dude? I, the Ascension, I love the Ascension, man. Just because I was a big NXT fan when it was like the developmental stuff. Yeah, and they were, you know, amazing on that. So I've just always liked them for that reason, but. <laughs> I mean, no uh, one's grabbed yeah, them man, yet. So when I, when I saw them, I just I saw nothing but like a bastardized, you know, Road Warrior clone, a yeah. D level Road Warriors clone. I was like, oh, this is awful. This is terrible. This is never, ever, 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 ever going to work. <laughs> there, uh, I wasn't far off. But, but I think it's more likely that we're just going to get one of the Impact tag teams. Um, I mean, who cares? Like, none of the teams in a match beat anybody, so this isn't much different, you know, they put triple XL right. in there, they put decay in there. That's what I feel like is going to happen. I would hope to see a debuting tag team, but I think at this juncture, like when it happened the day before the pay-per-view, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they're just like, Hey, decay's filling in. Right. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. And then I think, um, um, so who I think the winning? good brothers are going to win the titles back. The good brothers get the title back. I think like, I wouldn't be surprised if the good brothers get the title back because Without those titles, they don't feel like they're even a part of Impact Wrestling. You you really only see them on AEW and as part of being Kenny Omega's goons. And so, you know, if you can get those titles back on them, then at least the Impact World Tag Team titles are showing up on AEW every week. So, um, to me, but I don't think Violent by Design's reign is over yet. I think by having Violent by Design carry the tag team titles, you almost elevate all those other tag teams because violent by design is kind of irrelevant too, yeah, but so they're beatable. You, yeah. Right, 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 right. But so then when, if you put them against, you know, triple XL, now everybody's level has been raised because nobody matters. If that makes right. sense. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're getting at. Yeah. So I, I think violent by design is going to get the win here and retain the titles. All right. So we got our ultimate X match. It's a, Six way for the X Division Championship. We've got Trey Miguel versus Ace Austin versus Josh Alexander versus Chris Bay versus Rohit Raju versus Petey Williams' corpse. So <laughs> we got to. I'm just kidding. Petey Williams yeah. is in amazing shape. He's in absolutely amazing shape. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, Petey Williams is, is, you know, still trying out there after all these years. It's pretty impressive. Uh, but how do you see this match going? For me, Petey Williams is like a step below Tommy Dreamer at this point. Like he's, mm. they have him on the roster, but he really isn't a wrestler on the roster. He doesn't backstage shit, right. but it's just like in case of emergency, break glass, Tommy <laughs> Dreamer, Petey Williams, you know. Um, I, I just can't help but to think there's someone else they could have put in that spot, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's whatever. Um, th- this would have been a good match to debut someone as well. Um, mm-hmm. I-, I do want to say, I think Slammiversary, last year they did the Knockouts Gauntlet. I'm I'm going off topic here for, for a second. They did a Knockouts Gauntlet last year. I thought that was going to be a yeah. staple going forward. Mm-hmm. That is a match where you could have debuted some people. Um, and they don't have to be... This could be an opportunity to, to debut... Uh, you know, as long as you have a couple people with names, it's also an opportunity to debut some people without names. Right. And just given the whole presentation of Slammiversary, like it'll make those nobody debuts seem bigger than what they are. Yeah. You know, um, like if you were just like, I'm just pulling a random indie name out of my hat here. Is Say we're doing X Division and it's AR Fox or something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you bring them on a normal episode, people are okay, whatever. But I mean, it's all the way it's how you debut someone, not, not who you right. debut all the time. But I would have, I would have rather been, a, there been a debut here. I wouldn't yeah. even be surprised if, to, if PD Williams gets taken out. Before, I mean, I know this has been done yeah. over and over. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not taken out before the match and replaced. Right. Yeah, um, no, that wouldn't surprise me either. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of just throwing all the X division guys into a multi-man match, but the ultimate X is always a fun watch. And so I think this will be good. I think it's going to come down to Chris Bay and Josh Alexander. I think Josh Alexander gets the win, but I like the idea of heating Chris Bay up for whatever is next for him. I think, you know, um, Chris Bay is somebody that can be a a top program down the line. So I think you should just keep putting Chris Bay 
as the feature antagonist in multiple people's storylines and keep letting him build his profile because Chris Bay is a superstar of superstars and that's who you would like to have carrying the title. Yeah, that's what I think uh, is ex- exactly what's going to happen. I think it come down to, and this is not an elimination match, but I think it's going to come down to Bay and you know Alexander being being those guys and right. Um, you know, I'm sticking by that prediction that Kenny is going to try to get the X Division title off Josh and and lose the Impact title. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sticking with that. So I think Josh will definitely win, but Bay is Bay is clearly the guy here that they're you know trying to trying to feature, trying to highlight. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, but Josh Alexander to get the win. All right. So this brings us all the way down to our main event. We got Kenny Omega with Don Callis defending the Impact World Championship against Sammy Callahan in a no disqualification match. What do you think of the build here? And how do you see it going? I would have just been, I would have enjoyed the build more if we just didn't see it coming a mile away. Uh, that That's. The two things I hate in a build is one where it's just completely out of the blue and then one where you just see it a mile away and, you know, um, they were factoring him into the, you know, when he was, when Kenny was feuding with Moose, they were factoring Sammy in and I didn't, I didn't really like that. Um, I, I think these two are going to put on a hell of a match. Absolutely. I, I just, I feel about as confident that he's going to win that I thought that I felt Moose or Rich Swan was going to win. Like, I just, I don't think he's going to win. Yeah. And I don't know if the DQ stipulation is meant for, we're going to make sure Kenny doesn't get himself disqualified or it's, we're going to, you know, bring some stop signs and staple guns and wet floor signs. And that I would have no interest in if that's, if that's where they go with it. It's just a weird stipulation, knowing very well that Kenny has people inter- interfere in his matches, including Don Callis. So it, it's just a weird stipu- stipulation to do. Um, it makes me feel like we're going to get a BS finish. So I, maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's all going to make sense when the match happens, why it's an ODQ. Um, but I, I don't expect Sammy Callahan to win by any stretch of the imagination. But... Uh, I would if they didn't if they weren't doing the no DQ thing, I would be a little more interested. But now I'm now I'm a little worried with how it's gonna play out. But I just would have liked it more if they just let Kenny and Moose do their thing. And then if you wanted to have Sammy like appear, you know, right after that, all that cool. But because you 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 interwove him into the storyline with Moose, I, I I lost interest a long time ago. Or I lost a certain degree of interest. I'm not going to say I yeah. lost, I lost it all, but you know, I'm, I'm going to be pulling for Sammy Callahan to, to win this thing. I just don't think that's going to be the case. Yeah. I don't see any way in which Sammy wins that title. I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. And if they did decide to do it, it would just be a horrible waste. And that's no disrespect to Sammy Callahan, but you know, whoever takes this title off of Kenny Omega is a made man. Um, and Impact needs to make sure that that made man is their centerpiece, their hood ornament going forward, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I I, I can't see, I can't see uh, Kenny Omega dropping the title of Sammy Callahan in the situation. I just can't see it. I can't see it. Um, So, yeah, I got Kenny Omega. And I think that, like, adding an ODQ is just going to be, there's going to be like maybe multiple run-ins or, you know, multiple use of weapons or whatever. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. The good brothers are going to interfere or the young bucks are going to interfere and they will, you know, set, uh, uh, set, set, set Sammy Callahan, you know, on fire and leave him there to burn. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's just going to be one of those things where, okay, it's no disqualification. I've got more interference than you do. And I end up winning. Right. I mean, who does Sammy have to back him up? Like dude, if Ken Shamrock runs out there, I want to be like, Oh my God. Oh, he could really oh, use OBS why'd you say it? Why'd you say yeah. it? It's going to happen now. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. That Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, man. Any final thoughts on the show? You know, I, I, overall, I don't. I, I have not loved the build to the show at all. But Slammiversary always seems to really deliver. 
you know, that's the pay-per-view. Like, Bound for Glory is the one that I really worry about every year. Like, is this going to be right. any good? But Slammiversary, I mean, I can't remember the last time it wasn't good. And I'd even love last year's. Um, I think because it was just, you know, they just started kicking off the empty arena stuff. And it was, you know, I saw who said it. Sammy Callahan was like, oh, Impact did empty arena better wrestling better than anybody. I'm like, no. I appreciate uh, the positivity and I know you're an impact guy, but they, they're the ones who really needed people in the audience, man, because those shits, those shows start getting super depressing. You know, my final thoughts uh, didn't care for the way they put the match together. Um, but slam anniversary is just one of those pay-per-views that they, they go all in on. So I just have to believe it's going to be a good show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not planning on being parked right in front of my TV. I usually order on the fight app anyway, but I have a, a, a whole day out planning to be with my family tomorrow. So we'll see. If I get home in time to watch the show, then I'll buy it. If not, then I'll just catch the results later. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, there's an opportunity, right? There's an opportunity for this to be a great show. And, you know, we'll see if they're able to deliver. All right. Um, all right, BQ, tell the people where they can find you. All right, so as always, BQ speaks on Twitter. Uh, you could check out the Impact Lounge on Facebook and Instagram. I'm probably not the best at the world posting on those platforms, but I'm trying to work on it. But uh, BQ speaks at Twitter. Get at me. All right. You can find me at TW talking about on your social media choice. You can also follow my podcast page at TW. I'm sorry, at talking about pod. Um, this is the cool factor guys. We really are a little bit pressed for time. So we will get back to guest questions next week. Let us know what you think of, of, of this show. Let us know what you think of Slammiversary. Drop your comments in the video right below. Um, Tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. I'm TW for BQ.